privilege you have given to us to be members of the unstoppable champion generation. I'm asking you that you will visit us in a special way. As you raise David from the obscurity of being a shepherd boy to become the king in Israel, as you raise Daniel from being a captive in a strange land to become a primus inter pares, first among equals, Lord, you will visit us today in Jesus' name. For the few minutes we have, speak to us. Open our understanding so that we will understand the reasons for champions failing. And as we understand, we will acquire the grace to rise up, soaring on eagles' wings, so there will be more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Speak to us, Father, and let your name be glorified. We thank you because you know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, thank you very much. You may be seated. Before I go on, it is fit and proper to appreciate this opportunity to be able to share a few words with us. And I want to extend my gratitude to our Father in the Lord and for the organizers of impact for this opportunity. Let me tell you something. For those of us who grew up when there were no platforms like this, we look back with nostalgia and we were hoping now you have a great opportunity because if some of us had this opportunity, I'm telling you, would have been operated in the stratosphere. But today, you have this opportunity and I'm praying that you are going to make the best use of it in Jesus' name. We are talking about why champions fail. Listen to me, those of us who are in the Alpha location and as many of us, wherever you are, who are hearing the transmission from this center. You need to understand the very purpose of God for your life. If you don't understand that purpose, I want to tell you that it will be difficult to become an unstoppable champion. But hear the word of God. He says, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you what? To give you what? That's Jeremiah 29 verse 11. However, the question we need to ask ourselves is this. Why are we not all succeeding? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Why are you not succeeding? Why are you not unstoppable? That is why we are here today. Because as our senior colleagues in the university and research center will tell us, if you want to find the solution, you have to look at the independent variables that affect the dependent variable. The dependent variable is unstoppable champions. The independent variables are what are those things that makes it impossible or makes it difficult for people to succeed. That is why we are here today. And it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter the challenges you are facing. It doesn't matter where you are in the trajectory of life. The important thing is that if you know the what, if you know the why, you'll be able to understand how you can move forward. And I pray that that should be your experience in Jesus' name. There was this young boy. He was 14 years old with his um, um, siblings. They lived in a country called Jamaica. And if you know something about it, Jamaica is a country that has produced some of the fastest athletes, especially in the 100 meters. This boy, because of challenges in Jamaica, moved with his parents, his mother, and his siblings to on, um, um, Toronto, Canada. That was where he moved to. And then at the age of 16, he started to run. By the time he was running, there were reigning champions that came from United States of America. But in 1987, 
this young man broke the world record for 100 meters at 9.83 seconds. It was 1987. The whole world stood at attention. They said, who is this boy? The next year was to be the Seoul Olympics, 1988. And in that race, he broke another record. He defended his title and won the race in 9.79 seconds. So in Rome, in 1987, he ran 9.83. In 1988, September 24, he ran 9.79. But listen to me. Three days after, on the 27th of September, this athlete was stripped of his title. And the question is why? Ask your neighbor why? Ask your neighbor why? They stripped him of his title because he was found to have taken an illegal substance he was doping what does that tell us it's not about winning we need to understand that winning is not all how we win is very very important which is why on this occasion we want to look at why I mean, you have won before why am i not winning now and how am i going to win tomorrow and it is our prayer that's why our father in the lord and all the leaders has brought us together so that they can put in us the spirit of the winner. And I'm trusting the Lord, you will win. And you will be an unstoppable winner. And the Lord will do it for you. I just want to say that a champion is a person who has surpassed all obstacles. He has surpassed all rivals. And is number one. Other words for champion will be winner will be a title holder, a defending champion, a gold medalist, a cup winner, a victor, a conqueror, an overcomer. And if you look at all these words, it talks about people who are able to overcome the challenges that confront them. Therefore, we need to understand how winners are made. But today, in the interest of time, we want to focus on how, um, um, why champions fail. So we are looking at conquered champions restrained as victim. The question is, why do champions fail? Now sometimes, listen to me, we think that champions are those who are globally known. No, you might have been a champion in secondary school recently. One of our students in our campuses, uh, in the Lagos campus, came out with a result that shook the nation. She was and is acknowledged as a champion because she scored so high in her jam. But do you know that the fact that she scored so high in her jam, if she doesn't continue, if she doesn't understand why champions fail and continue to deal with them, there is no guarantee that in the university where she's going, she will still be a champion. Therefore, it tells you that being a champion is not a one-off event. It's not a have arrived. No, it's a destination. You're always going forward. You're always pressing forward so that you can continue to succeed. That is why First Corinthians chapter ten verse twelve tells us, "We are for let him that thinketh he standeth." Take heed, lest he fall. I want to start by saying that no man fails by default. No man fails. No student fails by default. In fact, it is out of activities that you do or you don't do that you fail. So we need to understand that failure is an inside job. So also is success. If you want to fail, all you need to do is to uh, ignore the rules of success and apply the rules of failure. So why do champions fail? The first important point is that if you forget God and begin to depend on yourself, that is a sure recipe for failure. Number two, pride that have arrived. I passed that exam. It's nothing to me. Do you remember? That in first semester, I made 4.9 in my GP on that course. 
This one, I don't need to read. Self-confidence. Too big to fall, fail syndrome. That will bring the champion down. It will not bring you down in Jesus' name. Another factor is self-indulgence and indiscipline. I think it was um, um, Thomas Edison that said that success is 99% perspiration and 1% inspiration. What that means is that no matter how naturally talented you are, if you don't discipline yourself to read, to go on with that project, that research work, to write that grant proposal that will give you the fund to further that your project, to write that new book that will take you from senior lecturer to professor, or those articles, if you give yourself to self-indulgence and indiscipline, of course, there will be a challenge. The next one is an imbalanced lifestyle and ill health. Some years ago, when I was in the campus, I was the general coordinator in River State University of Science and Technology. We had this brother from year one. Every time there will be exam, he will be sick. He will be so sick that he won't be able to rise the exam. If he rise, it's just to manage. And then, after the exam, they will come back to health. Of course, year one, year two, he was just, his CGPA was nothing to write home about. Then come year three, and God decided to intervene in his, in his situation. And today, I pray that God will intervene in your situation. As the man of God will minister to us, power will come down. And all those demonic forces hindering you, the Lord will blow them away in Jesus' name. Do you know that ill health can make champions to fail? Also, satanic attacks. Sometimes you see that strange things are happening to you. You read. You read very well. But immediately you step into that exam hall. Look at a student, a medical student. She has spent all the time. Her final exam is like 60% of her success. She has spent all the time. She has read. She has done everything. The day before the exam, she breaks down. Or she goes to the exam hall and her mind goes blank. And then she comes out and she's crying because she knows I failed. Why champions fail? Another one is when you lose your mentors and your advisors. When you think that you don't need them again. And that's why I want to speak to our youths. The influence of peer pressure. Before, you used to listen to your mother, to your father. You used to listen to your guidance and counselors in the church. But now, you have gained admission into secondary school. You are now in senior secondary school. You are now in the university. And you think you have arrived. You don't need mentors. You don't need advisors. That is a short recipe for failure. And then associated to that is moving with the wrong crowd. When you move with the wrong crowd, Failure will follow. Let me break them down a bit before I go to the top part. Uh, number one, those who have no vision or lose their focus will fail. Having and maintaining a vision is the most important requirement to becoming and remaining a champion. Without vision, people will float like an aimless boat. They don't know what they want to achieve. They want to be successful but they do not know what success really means for them. And I want to speak to our audience, especially those of us in societies, like in Western countries, where the law seems to favor endless life for youths. Where, if you try to discipline the youth, they have the, this ability to call up. Uh, the police or wherever and therefore parents are afraid guidance are afraid counselors are afraid to put their feet down listen if you have no vision if you have no focus there's no way you are going to succeed number two those champions fail when they do not persevere in the ladder of persistence success clearly takes years of struggle to achieve many people have passion but they are not persistent in their approach to fulfilling it. At the first sight of difficulty, they drop their enthusiasm. You had the testimony of one of her sisters that spoke about the impact of success. She wrote the first, chemistry was an issue. The second, chemistry was an issue. The third, chemistry was an issue. The question is, how many more was she going to write before she comes through? But I give God the glory 
that she overcame the greatest temptation, which is to look for second best or to deviate or to say, well, maybe medical science is not for me. You know, for a lot of us, we lower our expectation. If I cannot achieve this, okay, maybe. Let me do the second best. No. Champions are those who persist in the ladder of perseverance. You should not back off at the first sight of difficulty. That's very important. Why do champions fail? They fail because after they have achieved some level of success, they begin to procrastinate and give excuses. You will fail if you're a chronic procrastinator. So some people, everything can be done later. But that later never comes. They can spend time on playing football, doing video games, and during the midterm break, just whiling away the time. Not remembering that that damn paper, five of them, 11 of them, requires time to be able to finish them and finish them well. They continue to make excuses for everything in life. Why do champions fail? They fail because they cease to believe in themselves. And unfortunately, they doubt God. They have absolute zero faith in their own ability. Maybe something happened. While they were in primary school, everything was okay. Now they go to secondary school. And after junior secondary school, maybe in junior secondary school, they were asked to do further mass or some other subject. And because they have not done it before, and they begin to hear rumors from their friends, ah, this is the most difficult subject. Without even attempting it, they begin to fail already. That's why I say failure is an inside job. A man does not just fail without him, of course, accepting that failure is the option. But for unstoppable champions, failure is not an option. What did I say? I say what? For me, failure is not an option. What about you? Failure will not be an option. Why do champions fail? They fail because they are proud. They are full of ego. And they know it all. We call it ITK. I too know. That's how they fail. You do not know that no man is an island. That we need our interaction, healthy interaction, positive interaction with others. We need advice. We need counsel. We need guidance. You are new in the university. You are new in the polytechnic. You are new in the College of Education. You haven't gone there before. You need, and in our campuses, we have Deeper Life Campus Fellowship. We have Students fellowship. Why do we have those fellowships? To guide you, to help you. But for many of them, they will not come. Why? We don't need it. Maybe it's for losers, my friend. That's why champions fail. Finally, at this point, why do champions fail? They fail because they begin to cultivate the victim mentality. It is never their fault when they fail. The whole world is conspiring against them when they are not making it. Is that teacher? Is that my uh, math teacher? Is that my English teacher? Is that lecturer? But you didn't submit the assignment. But you didn't attend class. But you didn't do the, you know, you didn't do what you are supposed to do. They, are, they, they, they feel they are victims. They strongly believe that people want them to fail, especially in third world countries where everything is attributed to, it's coming from my village. Village people are after me. Listen to me. No village person is after you. You rise up and understand the principles of success so that you can overcome the failure. Therefore, playing victim forces them never to take responsibility or be able to own up to why they failed. In summary, we can see that failure is the outcome of consistently not doing something. Because he who fails to plan, plans to fail. We need to understand, unstoppable champions, that in a country or in a continent or in a world where people believe in instant everything, instant no do, instant coffee, instant uh, anything, there's nothing like instant true success. It is the outcome of deliberately planning, painstakingly, persisting, not giving up, 
not listening to the negative voices around you is the outcome of you deciding, making a decision. I will not fail. I will succeed. And when you make that decision, the Lord will back you up in Jesus' name. Now, if we look at, before we round up, chasing champions, restarting to victory. Now, let's recognize that people do fail. And some of us here, you might have experienced failure. Let me say that failure will be of three types. Number one, it's a moral failure. A moral failure is that when a believer that God has been helping turns away from God and goes into sin, of course, that believer needs to come back first. The first step is to repent of that sin and restore yourself. Remember, that prodigal son, the Bible says, when he came to himself, you need to come to yourself first. In Luke chapter 15, and let's read a few verses there. Luke, in chapter 15, I read in verse, Luke chapter 16. I read in verse 15. Uh, for interest of time, let's read verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father. And in verse, um, in verse 20, and he arose. He came to himself. He decided the course of action. I will arise. And in verse 20, he arose. So you need to look at yourself. Where have I fallen? What is this sin I've committed? And you rise up and go back to your father. If, for example, you have used somebody's jam, somebody wrote the jam for you or wired for you, you know that in the university or higher institution, God cannot be with you. So it requires you realizing, I did something wrong. You go back to God, you settle it with God, and you settle it with man. Then you can start afresh. We'll call it tabula rasa. The plate, the slate has been wiped clean. So you can start afresh. If the failure is of a persistent nature, then of course, you need to look back and say, where did I drop the ball? So that you can begin to pick it up again. And if the failure... It's just because of circumstances. Uh, one of our panelists spoke about the water. That when water is going and it finds an obstacle, water does a number of things. Number one, water may stay there for a while, rising, so that it can overflow the obstacle. Or it will find a way around it, through tributary. And water has been known to melt rock and pass through it. So whatever the challenges are, know that persistence is very important. So what do we do? Rejoice not against me. Micaiah chapter 7 verse 8. Oh my enemy, when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Samuel Besket said, ever tried, ever failed. No matter. Try again. Fail again. Fail better. Now remember, he's not talking about falling into sin. That's no. Once you're a child of God, you must remain a child of God. That is a constant. That is a giving. But he's talking about you wrote an exam, you try to do a project, you try to complete your, you know, that project for your NYSC. Try again. Try again. Try again. Falling is not the problem. It is staying down after we have fallen. We should build on our failure. We can use them as our stepping stone. We should close the door to the past. And then we should not, but we should not forget the mistakes that we made. We don't have to dwell on it. We don't have to let any of our energy or any of our time or space be wasted by the things we could not do well yesterday. Now you know better. You have come to impact. You have come, you have learned about the secrets of success. You have learned about how you can be a stable champion. Apply your knowledge and move forward. And when we do this, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Somebody say, fail means first attempt in learning. Fail means what? First attempt in what? In learning. So treat 
Every of your situational failure, academic failure, professional failure, as first attempt in learning. Because when you choose, when you know that, then you'll be able to overcome it. Don't make failure your undertaker. Don't be buried by your failure, but make it be your stepping stone. Brothers and sisters, we need to understand that sometimes it requires that we swallow our pride, be humble, be ready to start again, even if it's from the beginning. For many, this is the most difficult part. You have failed, your owners have failed, and so what? You are not the first to fail. Therefore, rise up. Those people, they have not come to impact uh, uh, academy in 20, uh, 20, 2023. You are here now. Make the best of it. Use the knowledge you are getting so that you can be the best. Now, I look at point number three before I round up. Chasing champions, restarting to victory. First of all, I want to let us know that there are fears that hold us captive. But the Bible says that God has not given you the spirit of what? He has not given me the spirit of what? But the spirit of what? Power. The spirit of what? And of what? A sound mind. That is God's purpose for you. So overcome the fears in your life. Because if you don't overcome the fears, you will not be able to rise up. I have a number of characters that the world called failures, but they turn their life around. Time will fail me. Let me just take one or two of them. Let me talk about a lady first. She was her own air career, had a rocky start. She was hired as a co-anchor of the evening news at Baltimore ABC affiliate. An enviable job for a young journalist. But she was dropped after just a few months. They said to her, you are not good enough. You can make it. By your color, by how, the way you talk, you can make it. She said herself that this was the first and worst failure of her career. However, where others have given up and would have run away, she did not allow her many failures and rejection to, to wipe away her passion for success. She was able to turn her story around and to build a global media organization. And today, she has become one of the most influential and indeed the richest black woman in the world with a net worth of over $3.5 billion. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Oprah Winfrey. That is her. Because when we see success sometimes, we don't understand how it works. For this second character, the condition of his bed was inauspicious. And he has a terrible name to add to his daily burden. For years, he went about like a youth under the shadow of failure and fate. But a day came when he decided that enough is enough. Can I hear you say, enough is enough? Can I hear you say it? Enough is enough. He said enough is enough. He took God at his word and launched a revolutionary appeal that up to today is still legendary for his brevity and pungency. He was granted his request and was transformed from poverty, sorrow, to joy and abundance. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you have met this man somewhere in Chronicles. This is Jabez, the man that moved from sorrow to honor. I don't know what they call you. Today, in a lot of places, people say, you have to change your name. No, it is your destiny. It's your prayer. It's your inner man. You need to change. Because when the inner man is changed, I'm telling you, the outer man will become what it ought to be. Allow me to just use one more example of some of the world's famous failure. This man, by the time he was 84 years, he has acquired an outstanding 1,093 patents. He was not only an inventor, he also managed to become a successful manufacturer and businessman, marketing his invention to the public. For one of the most significant inventions, he failed 10,000 times before perfecting it, finding the way that it will work. Listen to me, as a child, he had very little formal education attending school only for a few months. 
He was taught reading, writing, and arithmetic by his mother. He was always a very curious child and taught himself much by reading on his own. This failure, ladies and gentlemen, is no other person but Thomas Edison. Now, the question is, who will you be? Who will be the next champion rising from the valley of failure? Who will be the next champion? Western churches say success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. It is the courage to continue. And today, I pray God will give you the courage to continue in Jesus' name. Clear on call to champions to rise victorious. What should we do to go back to our winning way? Number one, remember your creator. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1. In the days of your youth, remember your creator. Number two, remove the obstacle. That thing that has hindered you from succeeding, remove it. You, might, you have to leave that gang. You have to leave that, those people you are associating with. You have to leave that place you used to go. Remove the obstacle and retool. Uh, the question was asked whether somebody, um, uh, whether if you don't do science, you cannot succeed. I want to say to you that in today's world, where um, technology, computing, AI is becoming the order of the day, whether you are doing arts or science or technical, you have to be competent at least in the use of computers. Is now, in fact, is the language of to today and tomorrow. No matter your age, a lot of us, we have phones in our hand. Phones that are worth hundreds of thousands of naira. And when you use it to make calls, there are so many things inside there that we can learn to use it, to use social media. They set up Microsoft Meeting, Google Meet, Zoom, Telegram, all those activities to make you relevant in today's world. You have to remove the obstacles and you have to retool yourself. Number three, resolve to persevere. Leave yesterday's failure alone, but make up your mind that no more failure for me. That from this moment, I'm going forward and I will succeed in Jesus' name. Number four, reject discouragement. Discouragement, Satan uses it. As we saw in that sketch that was done here. So tell us we can make it. Say no to that voice. Say no to that suggestion. You can make it. I say you can make it. And I know you will make it. And I know the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Number four, five, renew your focus. Maybe you have become distracted. You went to the campus. The joy of being an undergraduate. You got carried away. And then you forgot why you are there. Renew your focus. Number six, rebuild broken walls. There must be walls when you sleep, when you wake up. Somebody said that success is found in our daily routine. It's in your daily routine. I will sleep at this time. I will wake up at this time. Have my quiet time. Read my Bible. Then I will go to class. Before others come, I will spend good time reading. And then I will copy my notes. I'm not going to leave any notes on copy. If I have questions, the lecturer cannot answer. I will go to his office and I will ask questions. You need to renew your focus. Number six, I've, okay, so re rebuild broken walls. Number seven, reconnect to your champion's network. There's a champion network. DLSO is a champion's network. DLCF is a champion network. Why there? Your professional fellowship is a champion network. Your network, reconnect to it. A lot of us, students, we go to higher institution and we will we, we, we make ourselves, uh, we disappear into the campus wall. Our brethren will not know us, will not identify yourself. You are setting up yourself to failure. Reconnect to your champion's network. Then number eight, receive empowerment through prayer. We need to pray. And I want to thank God that in our campuses, we have prayer coordinators. We have prayer leaders. We arrange prayers in the morning, in the evening, different times. We'll take your issue, we'll take it to prayer. God answers prayer. And then number nine, resist the devil. When you resist the devil, what will happen? He will flee from you. When we resist the devil, what will happen? We will conquer. My final statement is to say, glory awaits you at the finishing line. Brothers and sisters, champions finish. They don't just finish. They finish well. Therefore, I want you to affirm to yourself, I will finish. And I will finish well. I will finish. And I will finish well. That project, you will finish. You will finish your junior secondary school in flying colors. You will go to senior secondary school. Your YEC will be one sitting. 
My dear undergraduates, those deans award are for you. You will get it. I say you will get it. And I look at our youth coppers, and I know that there are state awards for special projects. That project God is putting in your heart. Go on and do it. Strengthen that primary school. Strengthen that secondary school. Provide health care for the community. And God will exalt you in the name of Jesus Christ. And wherever we are in the world, God honors champions. When you finish, you will finish well. And the God Almighty will strengthen you in the name of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is speaking to us this hour. We have seen why champions fail. But by God's grace, we have seen how and why we can succeed. I end up by reading from Philippians chapter 4. Please open with me. So Philippians chapter 4. And we are going to read in verse 13. Are we there? Are we there? Let's read together. One, two, go. I can do all things through Christ who threatens me. You will do it. The Lord will lift you from failure to the mountaintop of success. You will be an unstoppable champion. Because Christ is involved, you cannot fail. So rise up this moment so that we can spend a few minutes to pray. And as you rise up, listen. I read that passage again. Philippians chapter 4, in verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ which threatens me. Therefore, I cannot fail. Can you say it? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Therefore, I cannot fail. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. Because of, don't clap your hands and say prayer. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. Sing it. I cannot. It's a prayer. Because of Jesus, I cannot fail. One more time. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. Because of Jesus, I cannot fail. Open your mouth and say, Lord, because of Jesus, I cannot fail. We have failed in the past. Now I'm rising up from the valley of defeat. And I'm going forward to the mountaintop of success as an unstoppable champion. Let's pray that God will help us. God will help me. He will help you. Every defeat in our lives, everything that has made us not to go forward and we're going backward, the Lord will take it away today. Open your mouth and pray that as the man of God will come forth with the word of God, our lives will be changed. Our lives will be transformed. Every defeat in our life, the Lord we take them away in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help me so that I'll be an unstoppable champion. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. One more prayer point. You are going to say, bye-bye to failure. Welcome success. Open your mouth and say, bye-bye to failure. Failure in my academics. Failure in any area of my life, failure in my finances, failure in my research, failure in my studies, failure in my health, anywhere there is failure. Say bye-bye to failure and ask the grace of God to come inside you for victory, for breakthrough, unstoppable champions. The Lord will see you through. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody say... Our Father, we are grateful. You didn't create failures. Therefore, we cannot fail. Because of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking you that as we hear the word this morning, the power to rise from the dungeon and valley of defeat to the mountaintop of extraordinary success, grant unto your people in Jesus name we thank you because you know your answer as we continue continue with us in Jesus name we pray
so much good material already injected into you. But now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just wrap it up. If I could, I'll take your hand because I'm going on a journey. And in that journey, I am unstoppable. And I say, give me your hand. What are you? And I hold your hand. I say, follow the steps. One, two, three. And as you keep on following, and I keep on holding your hand, you'll get there. I will get there. You'll get there in Jesus' name. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. We welcome you to every life in Jesus' name. Hold everyone's hand. Make everyone unstoppable and get us there. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. This day, I'm actually talking about championship at every level made easy. In First Chronicles chapter 11, and I'm reading there from verse 9. So David waxed greater and greater, for the Lord of hosts was with him. He will be with you. And when he's with you every time, everywhere, in every situation, you'll become an unstoppable champion. The second person I show you is in Esther chapter 9. And I'm reading there from verse 4. Esther chapter 9, verse 4. For Mordecai was great in the king's house, and his fame went out throughout all the provinces of the kingdom. For this man, Mordecai, waxed greater and greater. On the one hand, we have David. On the other hand, we have Mordecai. And the story, even though they went through paths that nobody would have thought that they could go greater and greater, but eventually, whatever your history is, whatever your past has been, this day, the mark of heaven is on your forehead that you will go greater and greater, stronger and stronger, higher and higher, better and better in Jesus' name. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the path already marked for good championship. Number two, the perseverance while moving towards the great championship. Good championship. Great championship. Number three, the pattern and the model for glowing championship. If I come to number one, number one is the path already marked out by God for good championship. Psalm 18, verse 35, it says, Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand as holding me up, and thy gentleness as made me great. Here, there are some steps that the Almighty God took him through. And these steps, they make up the path for good championship. Number one, in that first step, personal salvation. You need the shield of salvation that will shield you from Satan. Salvation. That will shield you from sin. Salvation. That will shield you from satanic attack. 
salvation. That will shield you from sickness, salvation. That will shield you from suffering, salvation. That will shield you from sorrow, salvation. And so the very first thing that David said he had is personal salvation. How did he do that? He confessed his sin. He asked for forgiveness. And he said he had been a bloody man. But he will not continue like that. And he received the salvation of the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities and healeth all thine transgressions. Now, that's number one, and that's what you have to, what you need to have. You need to have that salvation so that as you are moving on, all the vicissitudes of life, the challenges of life, they may try to cross your way and double cross you and make you stop. Salvation will be a shield, the shield of thy salvation. Number two, Profitable studies. Profitable studies. You see, the Lord has so made the earth that the farmer cannot reap except his souls. The Lord has so given us the world. Everything in the world, everything desirable, everything we need, and he gave us a brain. And then he gave us books. And until there's connection, good connection, daily connection, and the firm connection between the books and the brain, we cannot succeed. But thank God, you have a good brain. I have a good brain. <laughs> and your brain will not decrease in worth and in value in Jesus' name. And then we have planned success. Plan success. You know, there's so many roads going here, going there, going there. You must determine your destination. Before you take the road, somebody gets on the road and uh, we ask, where are you going? <laughs> he said, I'm sorry, I forgot that. I just saw that this new road, expressway, is so nice, I wanted to drive on it. Well, life doesn't work that way. There are many roads, but for you to get to your destination, you have to plan that first. I am getting there. I am going there. I am destined for that place. And then when you have seen where you are going, then you see the road that will take you there. We plan it. Plan success. Do you have any planning in your life? Have you known where you're going? Have you known the road and the path that will take you there? You might spend all your energy. You might be at top speed on a wrong road. All the energy and the top speed will get you to a wrong destination because you didn't have planning. What do I want to become in life? And what are the subjects that will lead me there? Where do I want to be in life? And what are the connections that will get me there? And what should I focus on in life? And what's the vision that will get me there? Number three is planned success. I come to number four, and it's prevented setbacks prevented setbacks. You see, there are people, they have been setbacks in life, but no problem. I say, for example, I wanted to go only one step a day, but I know that there might be one step back. So what do I do? I go two steps forward, deliberately, deliberately, so that if the one step backward comes, I'll still have the gain of one. Did you hear the parable? Is so I went forth to sow. And some fell by the wayside. 
And the birds came and picked up everything. And the next one, it fell on rocky ground. And it didn't have depth of earth. And because of that, it could not bring forth fruit. And the next one fell on thorny ground. And the thorns grew and choked the seed. I could not bring any fruit to perfection. But it says, and some fell on good ground and brought forth thirtyfold, sixtyfold, a hundredfold. What do I learn from that? I must look at what I'm doing. I must look at where I am planting the seed. If I see that every time, all the seed I've been planting, all the efforts I've been making, and I persevere, persevere, everything is on the wayside ground. I must go to the next. And then I see it's rocky ground. I mustn't stay there and be committed to only sowing and studying and working. I must see what seed generating. And then I see this is number four. What do I do? I give my attention to ground number four. I give uh, more time to sowing on ground number four. In fact, I take all my time out of the useless wayside and the rocky ground and the thorny ground and then all the four segments, all the four quarters, I put everything on the good ground. Have you looked at your life? Have you looked at this one produces nothing? But I spent time. This one produces nothing. And I spent time. This one appears to be producing, but at the end of the day, everything is withered. And then I've seen number four ground is the one that actually produces all that I need. Pack all the time together, all the efforts together, center it on number four. And then you have those setbacks that will not hinder you in Jesus' name. Now, this is a practical uh, study. You must be looking at your life. Uh -huh. That area, I spent so much time there. What does it yield? Our friends, I talk, I talk, I talk. What does that yield to my final exam? I read all these novels and I spend time. I enjoy the stories that I write. But what does it yield to my final exam? To the destination, the place I'm going. Number five is proper speech. Proper speech. Very important that the words of our mouth that comes from the thought of our heart. What we say, what we say. Uh, you know, you go to a doctor and he's, uh, you know, he's examined you and he's, he's saying, this is what you have. Mind what you say. No, doctor, I don't accept that. It's Satan that has problem and you are not Satan. Okay, why did you come to me? Mind your word. You're speaking to a teacher, and he says, this is the way. I've gone this way before. I've done this before. And you say, teacher, I read an author, and he says something different. And if I count him wise, then I'll count you foolish. Mind your words. The words you say, the proper speech in life. And then I say, way you talk to your junior brother, junior sister, that's another way you talk to daddy and talk to mommy. That's the way you talk to family and friends. There's another way you talk to somebody you are meeting for the first time, uh, but he holds the key to enter the door of success in his son. Mind your speech. All in life, think before you talk. Meditate. If I say it this way, if I say it that way, what will be the result? Proper speech. Number six, purposeful steadfastness. And, and that's what we discover from all the people that succeed. 
you have heard about Thomas Edison. He had a purpose. That's what I want to have. I want to light up the world. Because at that time, there was no electric bulb, no fluorescent, nothing. You know, all the had candles there, candles there. And some of the church houses were burning down. And Thomas Edison had this purpose. I was lighting up every room of every house, in every city, in every state, in every nation of the world. And then he failed. And he failed. And he failed. And somebody came to him and said, Thomas Edison, looks like you're failing, I'm failing, I'm failing. He said, no, I've not been failing. And the man said, but all the experiments you are conducting, nothing has worked. He said, I have learned 9 Hundred and ninety-nine ways that does not work, that do not work now because all these do not work. I didn't actually fail backwards. I failed forward. Now I can tell what to do. That's the thing in our lives: purposeful steadfastness. He was steadfast. He did it, and he did it again. He did it. And he did it again. If that is what the Lord has created you for. And what he has appointed you for. It's purposeful steadfastness. Ah, I went the wrong way. Come back and go to the right path again. And I want to announce to you today. You are a candidate for success. Number seven is productive service. Productive service service. You know, they, they, what we are made for is to serve. Look at those trees there. They are green leaves. They serve. They purify the air we breathe. And look at, you know, the animals. There are animals that carry human beings from one place to the other. Before the, you know, before the cars and all the trains and the, and the place before they came. Everyone, every sinner has a purpose. Why do you want to succeed? Because I want to serve my nation better. I want to serve the people of God better. And when you understand that anywhere you are, even as a young man, as a young woman, and you're just growing up, what I knew already, I'm using that, I am of service. It is that productive service that then highlights your life, that brings you to the limelight. And they say, he can do it, she can do it, because this is what he had done. That the path that leads us to good championship because we have personal salvation, profitable studies, planned success, prevented setbacks, proper speech, purposeful steadfastness, and now you'll be a productive child of God. You render service. You render service to your community. You render service in the school. You render service in the place of work. You render service everywhere you go. And as your service is productive, so you also, you'll be promoted higher, higher, thunderous amen, higher, in Jesus' name, in your life. I come to number two now. Number two, we're looking at the perseverance while moving towards great championship. We're looking at Esther chapter 9, and I'm reading from verse 4. For Mordecai was great. In the king's house, 
and his name went out throughout all the provinces for this man Mordecai was greater and greater ah, but Mordecai is not here why am I reading about him number one because God has written about him uh, in his book number two because all the things that were written at four time were written for our learning number three because what we need to do is to climb on the shoulders of the champ champions that went before us and then as we climb on their sh shoulders we'll see what they have done and how they did it and we're able to do the same thing look at chapter 10 Esther chapter 10 verse 3 in Esther chapter 10 verse 3 for Mordecai the Jew was next unto the king Ahasuerus and great among the Jews and accepted of the multitude of his brethren seeking the wealth of his people and speaking peace to all his seed. Speaking peace to all his seed. He became great. And as he became great, he became useful. Not only useful to himself or to his nuclear family, but useful unto the whole nation and all the 127 provinces. And that's what the Lord wants to make of us. That's the championship we're talking about. Now, what path, what road, and what steps did Mordecai follow that he became the champion of the day? And that you are going to become the champion of your day. God bless you. Double amen. amen. Triple amen. amen. Triple championship. Amen. Look at the steps they followed. Number one, the conviction of a future champion. The conviction of a future champion. Show me a man. Show me a woman that knows is going to climb the mountain, is going to get to the top of the mountain, and that is where his destiny is. There is something you find about him, conviction. Others bow, they will not bow. They try to convince him, they will not bow. They try to change his mind, he will not bow. The future championship was greater than all the things that came around him. What conviction do you have? An athlete will have a conviction. That's why practices every day. A future engineer will have a conviction. That's why he studies every time. A future doctor will have conviction and all the other classmates are not all going to be doctors. He understands and therefore he doesn't copy them. He doesn't do what he do because he is a future champion. In which way my son, my daughter, my brother, my sister there, in which way do you distinguish yourself and say, Others may, but I will not. Number one, the conviction of a future champion. Number two, the confidence of a firm champion. Now, trouble came because Mordecai.